Francine is going to walk to school. It is 500 meters from her house. She starts walking. After about 150 meters, she gets a text from her friend, and she slows down and walks slowly. Then she finishes her text and keeps walking to school. We can see this motion on a motion diagram. Here we have where she starts at zero meters. She's traveling at a constant velocity until she reaches about 170 meters. She slows down and then she speeds up again. Let's look at it on a position time graph. This position time graph shows the motion of Francine. She starts by traveling at a steady pace. Then she slows down, and you can see that because the slope is lower or is less than the first section. Then when she reaches about six minutes, she, which is around just past 200 meters, she speeds up again until the end. So we can look at this position time graph and see her speed based on the slope of the graph. There's another kind of graph that can show us the motion of an object or a person, and that's a velocity time graph. So if we take this graph, we can put it onto a velocity time graph. A velocity time graph shows velocity on the y-axis and, and time on the x-axis. In this graph, velocity is in meters per second, and time is in minutes. In this graph, time was in minutes also. This graph is the velocity time graph that matches this position time graph. So how can we get from here to here? If you look at this first section from zero to about three minutes, you can see that her velocity is constant. And if you put the numbers in for this x position over the time, you could find the velocity. If you remember, velocity equals delta x over delta t. So if you find the slope of this line, you'll get a value of one meter per second. You can graph that on a velocity time graph here. This shows that for the first three minutes, her velocity was a constant one meter per second. Then, for this next section from three minutes to six minutes, you can find the slope of the line and you'll find that it is less than one half. It's about 0.25 meters per second. It's a constant velocity. So if you put it on a velocity time graph, it would look like this. For those minutes, it's a constant 0.25 or point, actually it's around maybe 0.4 meters per second. For the last section, she speeds up even faster than she was in the first section. You can see because the slope is steeper here than it is here. If you looked at the numbers and you found the slope of the line, you would find that the change in x here over the change in time is equal to about 1.7 meters per second, and it's a constant velocity, so it looks like this. So this is how you go from a position time graph to its matching velocity graph. Let's talk about velocity graphs and what they show us. What does this graph tell us about velocity? And the vertical axis shows us the velocity of the object. So the first thing we can note is that a horizontal line shows a constant speed. There's a constant velocity from three to six minutes, a constant velocity from zero to three minutes, and a constant velocity from six to nine minutes. Let's look at a different velocity time graph. In this graph, we sometimes have a constant velocity, but not always. So what we see in this is that a, 
part of the slope that's a backslash like this, or this section, what is happening to the velocity? From this point to this point, the velocity is decreasing. So this means object is slowing down. We also have this type of motion. From here to here, the velocity goes from zero up until it looks like maybe two meters a second. There's no units on here, but it is increasing. When you have a forward slash, that means the object is speeding up. If you look at this velocity time graph, you'll notice that it starts with a negative velocity, then it goes to a zero velocity, and then it goes to a positive velocity. So the last thing you can note about a velocity time graph is if it crosses the x-axis, it means that the object has stopped. And you can see that because anytime it crosses, the velocity is equal to zero. There you go. That's a better way to see it. Right here, it's the velocity is zero. And the other thing that happens when it crosses the x-axis is that it has stopped and changed direction. So here, it had a negative velocity. That means, say if it was Francine, she was moving this direction. When it reached zero, she stopped, and then there was a positive velocity, so then she was changing direction. So anytime you cross the x-axis on a velocity time graph, you have stopped and changed direction. You can see whether the, the velocity is above or below the x-axis. An object that's moving in the positive direction, if it's a, you're moving in the positive direction if your velocity is positive. If the graph is going above the x-axis, the object is moving in the positive direction. If the object, if the graph is going below the x-axis, then the object is moving in the negative direction. So for this graph, you could interpret it as she starts moving in the negative direction, she stops and then she moves in the positive direction. So this is moving in the negative direction, stopping, and then moving in the positive direction. We can look at acceleration. We haven't talked about acceleration in detail. Acceleration is the change in velocity. And the equation for acceleration, acceleration is equal to the change in velocity over the change in time. I'm going to trade the graphs again because I want to show an example of acceleration. Acceleration is, if you look at, change in velocity is our y-axis, and change in time is our x-axis. So this, on a velocity time graph, is equal to the slope. This is the same as delta y over delta x. on a velocity time graph. The slope of a velocity time graph is the acceleration. So here we have a positive slope. That means that there is a positive acceleration. The object is speeding up. And you can tell that because the velocity is going from zero and it's increasing. Here the slope is zero. When the slope is zero, the acceleration is zero. So in this place, the velocity is constant and there's no acceleration. For this last section of motion, the slope is negative. That means there's a negative acceleration. Negative acceleration means we're decelerating or slowing down. Our velocity is going from this value down to zero. The area under a velocity time graph will give us the displacement. And this makes sense because we know that this is true. We know that the average velocity is equal to the change in x over the change in time. So we can rearrange this to show us that if we multiply both sides by delta t, we can see that delta t times v equals delta x. The displacement 
is equal to the area under a velocity time graph. And we'll look at this section here. Let's see what the displacement is for this section. And I think we need numbers on here. So we want to look at the area right here and find the displacement. The area is going to be 2 seconds. Let's say the time is in seconds. And the velocity is in meters per second. So our area will be 2 seconds times 2 meters per second. 2 seconds times 2 meters per second equals 4 meters. That means that over this section of the graph, this person traveled 4 meters. So this is a definition that you should learn. The area under a velocity time graph gives us the displacement. The last thing we're going to talk about for velocity times gra time graphs is location. And it is not possible you, to using one of these graphs to find the location of an object because we don't know where they started. And since we don't know where they started, even though we can find how far they've gone, if let's say Francine started at 300 meters and we know she's gone 100 meters, well, if we don't know where she started, she could have she could end up here or here or here or here. It all depends on where she started. So we would need a position time graph to know the location.